I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. I'd be shocked if this fight went the distance. Unknown, unknown. unknown MMA. Everything you don't know about MMA. So I'm Amanda, also known as Chica with Unknown MMA. Um, we are spe I'm speaking with Jeff Neal right now to talk a little bit about his upcoming fight. Um, this Saturday already, it feels like it came back so quickly, right? Yeah, I know, yeah. Came out real quick. Yeah. Uh, how is it? You're in New York. Are you freezing? Yeah, freezing. We, uh, <laughs> we walked to the uh, Brooklyn Bridge last night, and that was a mistake. Mm -hmm. My hands were freezing, but uh, we got some good pictures, so it was worth it. Yeah, it's just, it's beautiful, and I'm sure, I mean, you have just flew in from Texas, right? So it yeah. is barely starting to get cold here. Exactly. <laughs> so it's a little different. Um, so how do you feel uh, fighting on such a big card? It's uh, the UFC's ESPN debut. How do you feel? I mean, I'm, it's just another day. I really didn't, like, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's history, it's historic, but I don't, I don't see it as that. I see it as another fight for me, you know? Right. I'm, I'm more focused on what I got to do than what's around me. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so how different is it, like, compared to the, the Contender Series versus being, like, like uh, you fought in Austin and you fought in Dallas, right, last year? Yeah. So, how, like, what's the different, the main difference that you can feel? I mean, of course, the stage is bigger, but... I feel more comfortable fighting on the big stage, like, then the Contender Series, it was real... Uh, Real nerve wracking, you know what I mean? Like I, it was a short notice fight. Right. They called me up, and it was everything was just weird. And we fought, and there was like really nobody in the crowd. Mm -hmm. It was quiet about the place I was fighting, so it, just, it, it was real different. But fighting yeah. in the UFC and with all the people yelling and screaming, I'm used to that. Yeah, that makes sense. It seems more exciting, and yeah. almost like the Contender Series. I was watching, and it's kind of like almost like a spar or something because it's not yeah. a huge a, a venue. It's not a huge venue. There's not a ton of people there, so it's. Uh, like 50 max are in there it's, it's, it's weird yeah <laughs> it seems uh, a little more you can be a little more pumped when you're fighting on the bigger stage too yeah for sure yeah how do you feel um, your fight preparation has gone it's, it's been great actually like no injuries uh, my cardio's uh, on point uh, feeling sharp but I'm, it's, it's been a great camp that's good um, how does it feel do you think it's easier for you um because you were training alongside Alonzo, do you feel like it helps having someone else that's also doing camp for the same card? Yeah, it always does. It, it kind of takes the fire off of you. You know, if right. you're the only one doing camp, coat is on your ass, like only yours. <laughs> like, nobody else is getting that fire, so it, it helps if somebody else is getting ready for the fight. Yeah, that's good. So he's not just picking on you. <laughs> yeah, nobody else is going to feel bad. Yeah, so 2018 was a pretty big year for you. Um, you were able to fight twice in Texas. I'm sure that's fun, being able to fight in yeah. where you live. Yeah. So, like, my first two years, you see fights in Texas, you can't ask for, like, a better deal than that, you know? Right. Yeah, and so you are from Austin, but you train in Dallas. Is that correct? No, I'm a, I was born in Austin. I'm a military vet. I moved around, but oh, okay. uh, I, I'm from uh, the Fort Hood Clean area. Oh, Okay. Okay, I wasn't sure because I knew that you were training in Dallas, but I also read that you were from Austin, so yeah. pretty close to San Antonio. That's where I'm from. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we've seen your your striking and your footwork and your first few fights. How do you feel um, that that what's what's the advantage you feel you're taking into this fight? Um, speed and power. Speed and power, and um, I'll see how my uh, cardio matches up with his. Mm -hmm. Um. He's a good wrestler, but uh, I feel like I have a good enough takedown defense to uh, notify all of that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, speed and power, I know for sure that's my advantage in the mm -hmm. fight. Yeah, that's good. Um, what do you think, what's an underrated part of your game that you haven't been able to showcase yet? Um, my wrestling. My wrestling, uh, I know people probably like just look at me like, oh, this guy can't wrestle, but one day I'll get to show that I can wrestle, and I have good ground and pound too, so yeah. hopefully I can showcase that. I don't want to do it tomorrow, you know, I just want to stand up all the time but yeah. one day I'll show it yeah we'll see it eventually right <laughs> um so do you anticipate um him to look to be looking for like the power shots or more it sounds like you're you're anticipating they're going to be standing up mostly I, I really don't know his game plan going into fight because he uh he always does different things because he stood up with 10 means mm -hmm. when I expected him to take him down you know what I mean 10 means is a uh, dangerous striker 
mm-hmm. but he stood up with him the whole time. So he might have the same mentality coming in with me. But he was real uh, passive against Tim Means. He didn't uh, really push forward that much. But his last fight, he was real aggressive. So, I mean, I don't know. Whoever, whichever blow shows up, I'll be ready for it. Yeah. At the beginning of the fight, whenever y'all are kind of feeling each other out, like, what what's going through your mind when you're kind of trying to see what the other fighter's looking to do? Honestly, I really don't know. I, I can't really tell you what I think when I'm in the cage. I'm just, like, in this, like, a state of zen. Like, I'm not really mm-hmm. thinking. I'm just reacting and let my body do what it does best. Right. That's pretty cool. I'm interested to think of uh, what fighters are thinking during that moment because it seems like it, it might even go so fast where you kind of, at the end, you don't even know, like, how quickly it, it went by. Um, is that kind of how it becomes where you're just focused? Yeah. On- yeah, it's just focusing. Yeah, it does go by quick. Like, you just, after I'm fighting, I like look back and I just remember like bits and pieces. It's like I wasn't even fighting. You know? Yeah, yeah, I definitely understand that. Are you able to hear like your coaches and stuff during the fights? Yeah, I'm able. I'm able to hear them. Like I, the last fight, I heard them. Uh, we had a game plan for a head kick. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's how I learned the head kick. He called uh, called out zero zero. Yeah. And like that's one. That's one part I do remember. Once I heard that, I threw the kick. Yeah, that's pretty cool, and it's quick to it's cool to be able to do it really quickly, where you're just like you hear it and almost like uh, impulse, like you just you know that's what you need to go for. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. So, what what prediction? What do you think? How do you think you're gonna finish this fight? I mean, if if I do finish it, it's gonna be uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna finish it. Like uh, if it happens, in, uh, I plan on finishing the first round. Yeah. And if not, it's going to be most likely a three-round battle. Maybe a decision. And move. If, if it goes three rounds, we're going to get five tonight. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you guys, so Fortis MMA has had a pretty big, had a pretty big year in 2018. How do you feel um, this gym is, it sets it apart from all the other gyms? Uh, we move as a unit. Uh, it's a team atmosphere. Everybody, uh work out together we uh when you're not fighting people will still come back in the gym help the training partners uh the coach that works there at safe so he doesn't uh he he runs a tight ship there's no he don't we don't bring in outsiders we don't uh we don't tolerate like mediocre like people that are half-assing uh mm-hmm. he he runs it like a uh, like a dictator you know what i mean there's no like we we don't have a say in that you know what i mean like yeah. we are his fighters and we got we do it we're told yeah He's dope. Yeah. Yeah. He he can't, he was a uh, honorable mention on Ariel Hawani's show, uh, the the New Year's Eve show. So that was pretty cool, I'm sure, for the whole team. Yeah. That was pretty cool. We, we want we want the number one spot. We don't want an honorable mention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I can understand that. So um, what do you think is the first thing that your opponents um notice about you stepping into the cage with you? What's the first thing you think they they realize it's going to give them a problem my speed i feel like you, people don't a lot of people don't account for it but i feel like i'm pretty fast i don't know maybe yeah. i'm slower than i think but i feel, I feel like i'm fast <laughs> and that, that's what throws people off and then uh yeah. i have a i don't have normal movement you know what i mean i'm moving a little bit uh unorthodox mm-hmm. so that kind of throws them off too yeah so what what made you decide to pursue mma professionally I just jumped in. I really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, got done playing football uh, back in like 2009, 2010. Mm-hmm. And I, I wasn't doing anything. I was just working and smoking weed. And I was like, I need to fucking do something. <laughs> I'm not doing anything with my life. Yeah. Was there a moment where you realized that you you love MMA? Was there? A, can you describe that moment when you were like, this is what I need to be doing? After, after my first fight. My first fight, I got a... Got a was, it was a second round knockout, like seven seconds into it, mm-hmm. and that was like that was the best feeling, like I haven't felt that way ever. Right. And I loved it, like I fell in love after that. So that was the moment you were like, "This is it. You found your stuff." Yeah. That was my... Yeah. yeah. Um, what are your goals uh, in 2019? Uh, just win. Uh, try to get two more fights, two more wins. Uh, hopefully by the end of the year, get like a. A rank, a ranked opponent, like a top fifteen opponent. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. I'm not. I'm in no rush. I just got to get this win first. Right. And then uh, we'll, we'll. I'll think about the future. You know. 
Yeah. So I mentioned to you um, that the premise of my website is Unknown MMA. We want to showcase things that people might not know about fighters. Is there something that you would like for your fans to know about you? Uh, I prefer uh, rock music over any other type of genre. Oh, really? So that's yeah. the gates you pumped? That's my go-to, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That's cool. What kind, what kind of artists? Yeah. Oh, man, I got such a wide range Like when it comes to that. like I can listen to like Slipknot one day and the next day I'm listening to Chabelle or mm-hmm. Breaking Benjamin. You know, it's, yeah. it makes like if you go on my playlist, like you'll be thrown off by the type of music I listen to because it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your shuffle goes a little crazy. Yeah, real crazy. <laughs> um, so what is what is something that's that you think people who don't train MMA, what is something like unknown about MMA to you? Something unknown about MMA to me? Or like, or for, like for, for fans. Yeah, that... that the casual watcher may not see or notice. It, it's a lot of work. I, I feel like the cat, like fans really don't see the amount of work that the fighters put in. Mm-hmm. And they don't give them the respect that they deserve. You know, like, you hear of casual fans, oh, this guy sucks, he sucks. And like, it's nobody really that, especially when it comes to the UFC level, nobody really sucks. You know, right. I mean, they're all elite fighters. You know what I mean? They're the best at their craft. It's, mm-hmm. We put in a lot of work and the fans don't respect that. But that's any sport. Yeah, yeah, not realizing how much work and sacrifice actually goes into it on an everyday yeah. basis. Yeah, I can see that. So, um, you have any sponsors or your coaches that you want to shout out at the end of this? Yeah, I'll give a shout out to uh, Fit Mills Prep. They've been helping me with this weight cut. They helped me out my last, uh, my last fight, too. Is it really uh, good people, good food. I love it. Yeah. How do you feel about the weight cut? How's it been going? Oh, it's easy. It's uh, yeah. it's I'm used to it. Yeah. I'm a, I always wonder what's the hardest thing to cut from your diet. The hardest thing to cut from my diet? Candy. <laughs> candy? Yeah, I got to have candy. <laughs> I, I don't cut candy from my diet. Like, I'll, I'll eat gummy bears every day. <laughs> <laughs> You'll, like, work yeah. your, your nutrition plan around, like, I need my gummy bears? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for sitting down for a little bit and talking with me. Um, good luck this weekend. I hope that you have fun and that you do very well. I'm sure it'll be a great fight. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Be shocked if this fight went the distance. Unknown, unknown. unknown MMA. Everything you don't know about MMA.